Um, should I? Mic check, one, two, mic check, one, two. Testing, one, two. I think the, uh, the levels are okay. And I, sh I need to hit share, right? Yeah. yeah, before I start broadcast, don't I typically ask if everyone hears? So. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It still says off air though. Yeah, I think you got to start broadcast first and then uh, start the recording. This is on the correct. Mm -hmm. uh, shalom, um, brothers and sisters. Um, Welcome to uh, Sabbath class, Shabbat Shalom. Um, before we get started, we would like to make sure that everyone can hear us and see us clearly. So if you can just send us a chat to let us know that you see us and hear us correct uh, clearly, we can go ahead and get started. Check this. There you go. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, Shalom, brothers and sisters, can you hear us and see us clearly? We're in chat, right? Mm -hmm. I don't see any activity here, though. Like, where would I find that at? Loud and clear. Okay, the water, the water, the water. Okay, um, I apologize, brothers and sisters, for being uh, late uh, starting class. Um, if you hear any uh, uh, any distortion um, or any loud rain and um, noises in the background, is because of the environment we're in. Uh, we're in the middle of a, like a storm. It's, uh, it's really uh, raining a lot, a lot here. It's raining kind of hard. So if you hear any kind of uh, Distorted sound in the background. Know that it's just uh, rain, and it possibly could be uh, the equipment. If it is, let us know, and we'll uh, stop the broadcast and we'll check it to make sure that it's not uh, anything technical on, on our uh, end. Um, as you all know, I'm Elder Diana, and this is Brother Malak. We're going to be uh, administering Sabbath class today. Elder, recall, and Elder Lawyer was not able to be present today with Sabbath class. Uh, um, Busy preparing uh, he, the new, the new, uh, the next segment of Hebrew Academy, which will be December the 25th. Am I correct? Mm -hmm. December the 25th. So those of you who have not registered the Hebrew Academy, uh, you should make your uh, registration as soon as possible. Um, you know, we we do with limited uh, seating, limited slots. So if you want to get in, uh, those of you who are not registered, you should register. We also, uh, I would like to, uh, I hope that all of you had a blessed. Feast of Dedication also. And I hope that you are all looking forward to the Feast of Purim. As most of you know, Elder Recall made an announcement last, uh, I think I think last uh, Hebrew Academy, that um, there's a possibility that he may be in the UK. I'm not exactly sure what chapter in the UK he will be at, but he will be there. So I know you brothers and sisters are looking forward to seeing him there to uh, fellowship and celebrate the Feast of Purim. So with that, we're going to go ahead and get things started. We're going to say the Lord's Creed, Credo, and then we're going to go ahead and get started with another um, high-powered um, class from LD Iraq, which I'm quite sure that all of you will uh, will enjoy today. Okay, let's say the Lord's Credo. Shema Yasha Allah Ahaya Allah Ahaya Nawa Ahaya Akad. Shema Yasha Allah Ahaya Allah Hayanawa Ahaya Akar. 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 Hear, O Israel, the Lord. Hear, O Israel, the power, thy power is one. Shay. 
So uh, today's lesson is called Destined for Greatness, but Yet Subject to Sin. And this is a, a real interesting lesson because what Elder Yurok touches base on, he touches base on the potential that we have as the Most High's chosen people. Okay, and a lot of times we don't realize that potential. Okay, even the, um, and I don't want to leave the other nations out either, a lot of times they don't realize the potential that they have in themselves to serve the Most High, okay, and be subservient to him as well. Okay, but a lot of times we as Israelites, we don't, you know, we don't really think about the importance and the significance that we play, the role that we play, how the Most High would like to utilize us, and how we allow different uh, things that we deal with as far as sin and different vices, we allow those things to stagnate us, and we never really reach our full potential. And we just always constantly find ourselves just in a state of just, uh, I like to call it repetitive sin, where you'd be just standing still like a uh, like a hamster on a treadmill. We just always find ourselves in this state, never growing, never developing, never evolving, never uh, able to uh, come to the full <laughs> stature of Yeshaya. All right. So uh, let's read some of the uh, the closed caption here, some of the uh, commentary before we go into the first scripture. Would you like to read it from here? Is this good enough? Or you can start from here. All right. It says there was once a time where, as a people, we taught the world through example what it meant to be righteous as a nation, as in the beginning. Sin entered in, and ultimately, we all lost our way. Let us examine the scriptures to better understand the journey we must go through in order to become that perfect vessel that the Most High can use one day, direct the earth in righteousness again. Right. So at one time, we, the, the scripture said that Israel is the form of all things. Okay, we were the innovators. We were the inventors. We were the ones that catapulted society, uh, societies back then, and also we're the we're the ones who kind of catapult society now. We have a, a, an influence on society, you know. And I don't want to say the influence that we have as far as you know the music industry, clothing, fashion, and things like that. You know, um, you know I hate to use those kind of examples, but those are areas where we excel at, you know, and we differ at than you know than the other nations. You understand, but we taught the nations at one time when David had had his kingdom established, when Solomon had his kingdom established. All the other nations came to our kings and came to our nation for counsel, for wisdom, for for law. Okay, and we're not viewed in that manner today, judging by our behavior as a people collectively. We're not viewed in that in that manner again. So the so this is something that we need to think about and dwell upon, and um and just put that in the forefront. Of our thought process when it comes to us just uh, coming back to the to the Most High in Christ, coming back to our nationality and our culture. All right, so let's get Genesis, the first chapter, and um, start from verse twenty-seven. I'm sorry. Okay, you, 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 someone said the volume is too low. You fix it then? Yeah. This, so, okay. Okay. I didn't see that. All right. Okay, Genesis 1 and 27. Genesis chapter 1, verse 27. Mm -hmm. And so the Most High created man in his own image. In the image of the Most High created he him. Male and female created he them. Right. So what about the image of the Most High? The Most High is a, is a, has a righteous image. Okay, he's just, he's equitable. You understand? He deals with things in decency and order. He deals with things in pureness. He's undefiled. He doesn't lie. He just he just doesn't run rampant. You understand through uh you know through through uh through the nations and through the earth. The most high is cordial, he's inviting, he's loving, he's merciful. These are some just some of the qualities the most high. Uh, possess and that represents his image and us as his image we should represent some of these qualities also but when the nations look at us and everyone look at us they don't see that in us they don't see the they don't see the good qualities in in in, um, in the most high chosen people all they see is the negative qualities about us the negative attributes that we possess that we develop throughout these different time periods 
You understand that we develop now, that we developed back then by dealing with satanic belief systems. So now we're, we're uh, considered an astonishment and a proverb, according to the scriptures, instead of being held in high, high esteem and high regard to the world. All right, read. Verse 38. Mm -hmm. And the most I blessed them, and the most I said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth mm -hmm. and subdue it and have dominion over fish and over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that move it upon the earth. Right, so that was the most high intention for, for, uh, for Israel, for Adam and Eve, but also for his chosen people. That was his intention, for them to govern and rule the earth and have dominion over the earth, over all creation, okay? And have not only have dominion over all creation, but have rulership and, govern and government. We should have been governing the nations in righteousness. And this is what the Most High wants to wants to reinstitute in this earth again. He wants to reinstitute righteousness again, order. Okay, and He's going to do it through us, believe it or not. And I know a lot of times, you know, we we sit back and we look at it and we think about the condition that we're in and the things that we go through as a people and how we are and where we're at right now as a people. But the Most High is going to utilize us to do that again. All right, there's more on that. Okay, let's move on to a footnote there. Mike Yeshaya. Right, it says, Mike Yeshaya, our job was to represent the Most High in righteousness. We were given dominion over the whole earth in order to place it in balance under the laws of the Father. Before we can come a full age in understanding we fell through temptation and sin by rebelling against the Father. That's interesting. So before we got an opportunity to develop, I like the comment. I love commentating on Elder your rocks mm -hmm. commentary. It's like a scripture because before we got an opportunity to develop, we were corrupted by sin. We were corrupted by Satan. We were not fully developed. We learned things before we were actually really supposed to. The fallen angels came and taught us different things before the Most High really intended for us to know these things. And we became corrupted. Okay? Because we were just, we, Adam and Eve, they were innocent. They didn't know any better. All they ever knew was to do the right thing. They didn't know about doing the wrong thing. They didn't know about, about uh, other uh, forms of, uh, of, of persuasion. Because they just always knew to do the right thing. They were, they were almost like, uh, like ch children. Innocent, exactly. And here comes Satan. What did he do? He do the same thing that some adults do today with little children. They corrupt the morals of minors. Mm -hmm. That's what he did. All right. So let's uh, get second. I just the third chapter. Second, the third chapter. You have to give me time to get it. You know, I got the new apocrypha. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the most high bless me with some new books. Second Ezra, third chapter, and verse 19. Okay. Read that. Second Ezra chapter 3, verse 19. Mm -hmm. And the glory went through the four through four gates of fire, and of earthquake, and of wind, and of cold, that thou mightest give the law unto the seed of Jacob. In diligence unto the generation of Israel, mm -hmm. and yet took his thou not away from the from a wicked heart, them a wicked heart. That this I, is interesting because Ezra is saying, Listen, when you came down and gave Moses the law, you did so many spectacular things when you gave him the law, and that process of you giving them and giving them the law, but you didn't take away the wicked heart that they had. But you did all this when you came to give it to them, but you didn't take away the mindset that they had. It's interesting. Read on. Verse 20 says, And yet tookest thou not away from them a wicked heart, that thy law might bring forth fruit in them. You see that? So the law was supposed to bring fruit in us. But the Most High wanted us to do that on our own. We had, he wanted us to learn and develop on our own. He shouldn't have to do everything. When do we come to the, the, the conclusion and identify what right from wrong? They say, listen, okay, I've been living this particular way for, for a period of time. Now I'm going to live the right way and do things the right way for a period of time or just for the rest of my life because we gave satan a run we gave satan a lot of time 
We logged a lot of hours in with him. You understand? So now we got to put that time into the most high, especially the remaining time that we have. You understand? And it's interesting, too. A lot of times we wait till we reach certain ages for some apparent reason to want to really get ourselves together and dedicate ourselves to the most high more. But we have to do it in, at, at, at a younger stage, at the youngest stage. Okay? Let's read on. Verse 21. For the first Adam, bearing a wicked heart, transgressed and was overcome. And so be all they that are born of him. Mm -hmm. Thus infirmity was made per permanent and the law also in the heart of the people with the malig malignity of the root, so that the good depart away and the evil abode still. Right, so now, since Adam transgressed, let's see, remember what's placed inside of Adam, that, malig that malignity, that root of evil and rebellion and disobedience, it's in us now. And it's hard for us to remove. So now we're more, in, because that's in us now, we're more inclined to, to be uh, susceptible to it. At one time we wasn't, but see, we can't we can't continue to allow ourselves to be susceptible to that to those vibrations anymore. When do we abstain from it? When do we fight? You understand and be more perceptive to what the Most High want us to do, to be in righteousness, to live in righteousness, to do the right thing. We always lean towards the negative. It's like it's like we can't help it, but we can help it if we really want to. We can change if we really if, if we really want to. Okay, read. Verse 23. So the time passed away, and the years were brought to an end. Then didst thou raise thee up, a servant called David. We see that. So generations and times passed. All this time went past, and, and we were and mankind was just in this state of sin and wickedness and rebellion and disobedience against the most high. Then the most high brought it back around with David. He wanted to institute he wanted to institute righteousness in the earth again. All right, read verse 24. Whom thou commandest to build a city unto thy name, and to offer incense and oblations unto thee therein. When this was done many years, then they that inhabited the city forsook thee, and all in and all things did even as Adam and all his generations had done. So the same thing that Adam did, we did. Okay, or they did during that time. And it's been a repetitive uh, cycle. The same thing as the generation goes on from Adam all the way up to us right now in the day. Every time the Most High deal with us and send the prophets to deliver us and try to institute righteousness in our lives again and in the nation again, what do we do? We forsake his law and we go off again. And we're still doing it today. When will it stop? When will it stop? And that's something that we have to examine collectively as, an, as a nation, okay? But we also have to examine that collectively as individuals also, all right? So the whole, really the whole planet, the whole earth have to take a look at this because we're all doing it. The other nations, everybody's doing it, all right? We, at the end of verse 26, mm -hmm. for they also had a wicked heart. And so thou gavest the city over into the hands of thy enemies. <laughs> So that's what the Most High did. The Most High gave the city over to the hands of our, of our enemies. The same thing he's doing today. He's been doing it throughout all of these dispensations of time. Every time we were we were able to uh, build, you understand, and, and re restore ourselves, we sinned against the Most High. The Most High brought the enemies in and destroyed us. And that's what's taking place with brothers with, 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 uh, with Israel today. And a lot of us really, we really don't understand that, and it's difficult for us to relate to that from a biblical perspective. That you know that we're that we're cursed, and because of our rebellion and disobedience against the Most High, He's sending the nations against us. And this is why we're ha we're going through these different uh, these these different situations. These, these uh, you know this trial and this tribulation period, all the anguish and the persecution that we're suffering from in our communities. Okay, with the powers that be. All right. Let's move on. As a matter of fact, can we get, um, no, I'm, I'm a bypass that. It's not important. Those are just some optional footnotes. Let's move on to this commentary. <clears throat> can you see that? Yeah. Okay. It says the fall of Adam brought forth sin within our borders to the point it was like a 
like a law in itself. Even though Adam sinned, we have been even more rebellious then than Adam ever was. There were many who arose to help our people like David to come back to the ways of the father. But eventually, much like today, we forsake his ways for sin. Let's read the account of Enoch. You know, this was a, a, a period or a stage where the Most High was starting a revival. Because even during this time, because what happened? The sons of Adam went off also. Right? So even during this time, the Most High was sending prophets. Okay? To deliver us, to get us to wake up and to come back to his laws and his statutes and commandments. And this is interesting. Enoch was dropping some of the principles of the law before Moses even inaugurated it and dropped it himself. All right. Let's read uh, uh, the book of Jasher, and we're going to start in the third chapter. Okay. The book of Jasher, the third chapter, and we're going to start from verse one. Let me enlarge that one. Okay. All right, it says, And Enoch lived 65 years, and he begat Methuselah. And Enoch walked with the Most High after having begot Methuselah. And he served the Most High and despised the evil ways of men. And the soul of Enoch was wrapped up in the instruction of the Most High, in knowledge and in understanding. And he wisely retired from the sons of men and, and secreted himself from them for many days. Right, so Enoch was filled with the knowledge of the Most High. He was wise, he was intelligent, but he separated himself from the sons of men because they were wicked and evil. Excuse me, proud after that. And this is something that we have to also learn to do. We have to separate ourselves also from the sons of men when it comes to the, the evil and the wicked things that the society wants to push on us and wants us to continue to indulge in. We have to separate ourselves from these things because these are all the things that stagnates us and keep us in this state. It keeps, it, it allows Satan and these spirits to continue to have power over us. It's designed that way. All right, read. Verse three, and it was at the expiration of many years while he was serving the Most High and praying before him in his house that an angel of the Most High called to him from heaven and said, and he said, here am I. And he said, rise, go forth from thy house and from the place where thou doest hide thyself and the end appear to the sons of men in order that thou mayest teach them the way in which that, in which they should go. So he was, he was commissioned at this point to go to the sons of men to go to the nations and teach them the world and teach them all the, all the societies at this time and teach them the righteousness of the Most High. All right, read. And the work which they must accomplish to enter into the ways of the Most High. Right, so Enoch was teaching about light. Enoch was teaching the gospel before John was. He was teaching the gospel before Yeshia taught it. All right, Ms. Mona? Okay, we want to go to, um, let's jump down to, um, no, let's read this footnote, this commentary here. It says, while the world was becoming worse to stay pure, Enoch spent his time separated from the worldly people. Now, this is interesting. So while the world was becoming worse and things were getting worse, evil was multiplying, right? And men were waxing gross in their sins. Enoch separated himself. Okay. And this is what we also need to do, too. Because it's hard containing yourself in these kind of environments and they're totally full of sin. It's hard. So a lot of times if, if you have an opportunity to separate yourself and kind of get away from, from uh, uh, different uh, areas or whatever, if you're fortunate enough to move, you may want to consider that. All right. Read. He was focused on understanding the ways of the Most High. Enoch is an example of what we really should begin to do in our own lives. Mm -hmm. Our interactions with the world should primarily be for the edification of the people and, of course, whatever we must do to sustain ourselves in righteousness. Can we have a piece of paper? Let's go first, Peter 4 4. Let's go to verse 16 really quick. 
this element rock he said a lot about. You know, we have to protect ourselves. And you have to know yourself. You got to know yourself. You got to know your limits. You got to know what you can do, what you can't do, what you can get involved in and what you can't get involved in. You know yourself. You know what gets you every time. You understand? You, you know it. So why even put yourself in that position when you know that gets you every time? But Satan got it designed that way for you. He's he, he going to give you just what you need. He's going to give you that pleasure. OK, he's going to give you the red light district. He's going to give you the clubs. He's going to give you the, 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 the paraphernalia, the narcotics and all that kind of stuff. He gives us all those all the things that we indulge in and like to enjoy. All right. The first Peter is four. I said, excuse me, give me one moment. Get that. Yes, sir. First Peter's four and four. Let's read that. Let's start from um, let's start from one. First Peter chapter one four verse one. Mm -hmm. For as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. This is interesting because it says the same way that Yeshia has suffered for us in the flesh, we have to also suffer ourselves in the flesh. So there was things that Yeshia could have done. There was things that he could have enjoyed. Okay, but he denied himself. He abstained from those specific things. He's, that was part of his suffering. A lot of his suffering wasn't just some, you understand, being, being led to be crucified. Some of his suffering was, was abstaining from, the, from the, uh, the different temptation that society had to offer during that time period. Okay, and we have to, you know, arm ourselves with that same mindset to know that, listen, I have to abstain from this. I have to watch this. I have to guard my senses from these particular things. Mm -hmm. All right. You smell that? Mm -hmm. But he that has suffered in the flesh has seized from sin. Interesting. So if you've mm -hmm. suffered in your flesh, you've seized from sin. What does that mean? You've abstained. You disciplined yourself to, to not deal with these particular um, negative habits. It's been hard. It's, you know, you're suffering because your body and your flesh want it, wants to do it, wants to fulfill it, wants to live it. But you suffer it. You suffer it and you abstain from it. And you don't get involved in it. The suffering is not always being beat down all the time. OK. Dealing with the persecution all the time. The suffering is is, is mental, too. It's you abstaining and, and developing the mindset and and having a strong urge and desire for something but yet still deny it okay small that part two that he no longer should live to the rest of his time in the flesh interesting that that's what we shouldn't do we shouldn't no longer live the rest of our time in the flesh and according to our flesh according to the things that we desire according to the things that we need we're not supposed to be living these last years of our life in that particular manner. We're supposed to be living the remaining years of our life in the righteousness of the Most High in Christ. Because we already did it. With the, the, the temptation and the sin that you're about to get involved in, you've done it a million times. A million times. And you and you just still just constantly give yourself over to it. Over and over and over and over again. Like, who does that? I mean, do you kick the bucket? At, at one time, do you kick the habit? At, I mean, do you ever get over it? All right. Read. That he, that he no, no longer should live in the rest of his time in the flesh mm -hmm. to the lust of men, but to the will of the Most High. And that's what we do. We live our life to the lust of men. Come on, man. Let's go do that. This is what we this is what we doing tonight. Oh, come on. We've we, we been doing this. You know, why are you, why are you switching up, man? Why are you changing now? We used to do this all the time before. What's the problem? Mm -hmm. To the lust of men, when we shouldn't be persuaded, we shouldn't be enticed by, 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 by sinners, according to the scriptures it says. We should be able to govern ourselves according to righteousness because that's what's important. All right, it's more on that. Verse three. Mm -hmm. For the time past our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles. You see that? So in the past, we did wrought those those emotions and those feelings and those things. We did indulge in those kind of behaviors. In, the, in times past, before baptism, how come after baptism, we still dealing with those things? 
at the baptism, still regurgitating the, the same uh, behavior, still dealing with the same man, with the old man, brother, when the old man is supposed to be dead. But we we, we revive him, we be, uh, resuscitate him, we bring him back. That's what we do. Read. For the time past, our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. When we walked in deceivishness, lust, excessive wine, revelings, banquetings, and abominable idolatries, wherein they, wherein they think it strange that you run not with them to the same excess of riot. You see that? All those, all those particulars, those are all the things that we all indulged in at one point in time in our lives, but now we're past those things. At least we should be. We should be past those stages. The choice more now. Read the last any, any part of that. Speaking evil of you, who shall give account to him that is ready to judge the quick and the dead? That's interesting too, because we a lot of people when we don't do these particular things, a lot of people wonder why we don't do these things. They look at us as being evil, and they they, they murmur and, and backbite and talk about us. Well, I remember when he used to do that. I remember before he didn't have a problem with this. Now he got a problem with it. Oh, see, man, he changing. See, he think he better than us now. Because he's been reading the Bible because he done gave his life to, 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 to what's that God? Yeshaya. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? I've been there before. Well, I wanted, listen, I was a rotten dude. You understand? Coming up as a juvenile. You know, I had issues. You know, I grew up in a, in a you know, in a bad neighborhood. You understand? So I've done things that I, I'm not, you know, happy about. And when I when I came into this knowledge and this truth, I didn't want to do those things anymore. My friends were still doing those things. And I got I got labeled. I got stereotyped. Nobody wanted to deal with me. Everybody was just talking about me because I wanted to make a change. And it wasn't that I was just trying to be better, but I wanted to do better. I wasn't trying to be better. I just was just examining myself. This morning. Okay, let's get um, let's move on. I had a few more scriptures that I, that I wanted to get. But let's get back into the lesson. We're going to jump back into uh, Jasher, and we're going to go back to the seventeenth uh, verse, the third chapter and the seventeenth verse in the book of Jasher. Right? Okay. It says it was and it was in a year of Adam's death, which was two hundred and forty. 43rd year of the reign of Enoch. In the time that Enoch, in the time, in that time, Enoch resolved to separate himself from the sons of men. Listen to the Enoch resolved to separate him, him, himself from the sons of men. He resolved. He came to a conclusion. He was contemplating. He was thinking about making a change in his life. Like, listen, I got to separate. I got to separate. That's what we should be doing. Like, listen, I got to separate myself from these brothers, from these sisters. I, I can't continue to do this anymore. I can't continue to live like this anymore. I can't do this anymore. I know better now. All right? Read. In the time that Enoch resolved to separate himself from the sons of men and to secret himself as the first in order to serve the Most High. Mm -hmm. And Enoch did so, but did not entirely secret himself from them but kept away from the sons of men three days and then went to them for one day. So Enoch secluded himself, some, you know, for a moment, for a couple of days, just to get away from, 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 you know, from society. Sometimes we may need to do that. Just get away for a couple of days, three days, maybe a week. Go visit a family member in another state, in another country. Just get out the neighborhood, get out the community for a while and, and just, you know, see what happens. And if you're if you're really sincere about getting your life together, the most high could open up a door for you somewhere. You understand? In another country, in another state. If he see that you're sincere about wanting to get away, but if you're still holding on to something, if you still desire to look back and go back to something, then the most high may not provide that opportunity for you to move on, move on and get yourself together. All right? What's going on? Verse 20. He did in this manner for many years. And he afterward concealed himself for six days and appeared to the people one day in seven. And after that, once a month and then once in a year. 
until all the kings, princes, and sons of men sought for him and desired again to see the face of Enoch. That's interesting. Why did they desire to see the face of Enoch? Because they saw the things that Enoch was prophesying about and telling them about beforehand or for time. That's, they started seeing these things happening and occurring in the earth. Now everybody want to talk to Enoch. Where Enoch at? Now they was looking for him. But Enoch was gone. He, he was out. You know, so that's something that we need to examine because we're only going to be out here for for uh, a short period of time. Like, I don't know what what's the window on on us prophesying and teaching. You understand? Elder Carl speaks about that a lot. One day you're going to see us, the next day you're not. Or one year you're going to see us, the next year you, you may not. So we need to get the teachings now, make the changes now. You understand? Start uh, ad adapting. You understand to a life of righteousness. All right. It's more than that. Says and to hear and to hear his word, but they could not, as all the sons of men were greatly afraid of Enoch, and they feared to approach him on account of the godlike awe that was seated upon his countenance. You see that? So Enoch was righteous and he was pious, and that they 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 didn't know how to deal with that. Just like a lot of people who who are like some of our family members when they know that we've made a, a conscious effort and a real decision to get ourselves together when they see us a lot of times they don't know how to take us they don't know how to deal with us even because a lot of times they still be in their sin so they don't know how to deal with us they don't know how to interact with us anymore because they feel that shame and that guilt all right it's more than that. Yeah, last sentence it says, therefore no man could look at him fearing he might be punished and die Mm, see that? No, I don't. I don't want to see them. Fearing that they may be punished and die. It's interesting. And a lot of times we're like that too. You don't want to hear the truth. You don't want to hear it. I know if I go, if I if I go and see El Desire or see 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 Tehran or whoever, you know what I mean. They're going to feel obligated. To, to, to make a change and make a difference because what you tell them is going to make them think about, you know, their behavior. So a lot of times people don't even want to hear. They try to avoid you, but then they're going to have to make the change and then they're going to be held accountable because they heard it. OK. So where are we at now? Commentary. OK. It says the more you the more you desire the things from above, the more you. Spirit and strengthen. Enoch had a diligence. Enoch had the diligence and the love for the Father to accomplish the things far beyond this world and its physical limitations as we understand them today. The question is, what do we do? What what do we love above the most high that can keep us from our own spiritual growth? So Enoch was, he was diligent, he was disciplining himself, disciplining himself. So that's what we need to think about too. We need to think about disciplining ourselves and thinking about being diligent. And when I think about that uh, diligent, uh, it reminds me of uh, something else we talked about uh, when, uh, in, the piece of, uh, in the piece of dedication lesson. That's what we need to do. We need to rededicate ourselves to the Most High and show him our due diligence. That's what we need to do. Instead of always going back into the Old Testament and reading about the stories of how Judas and then restored the, the temple, what about us restoring ourselves? How do we restore ourselves back to the state that we need to be in, back to the state that Adam and Eve was before they fell? We, we don't want to put the focus on that. I thought that was interesting for Elder Recall to bring that out. You know, it's really important. All right. So. We had Colossians, the third chapter, right? Mm -hmm. Let me get it real quick. Excuse me. <clears throat> Colossians 3. Let's start from verse 1 because L.D. Rock mentioned about uh, the desire, desiring things above. And I think that a lot of times we still desire this world, we still desire this earth. I don't know whether it's because we felt like we didn't fulfill something or I don't know what what it may be. I guess each each 
every uh, each individual can can dwell on that themselves and ask themselves, well, what, what do you feel like you've missed in this society that you still feel like you need to be a part of it? You still need to be a part of the, the, the sinful nature of this world. What is it that you feel like you've missed? What is it that you felt like you, you didn't get the experience and do? We kind of deal with that a lot. Like I haven't, you know, I haven't experienced. What, what, what do you think? You, have, you haven't experienced a certain sin. So you want to you want to you want to hold out because there's a certain particular sin I, I just have not experienced yet. I want to know what it feels like. I want to experience it. What is it? What are we holding on to? And when we 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 done just about it all, right? Mm. <laughs> Name something we haven't done. You understand? But I guess it's still something out there that we still want to experience because we still sin, or we still just have a desire to 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 go the wrong direction. All right. So we at Colossians three and one. It's okay. Okay, it's choppy. Um, how, how, oh, really? Wow. Um, I apologize if, if, if it's, if the, uh, the video is choppy, it may be because we're having, uh, bad weather here and, um, our, our, uh, there may be some interference in, in the, uh, the reception that we're getting. So, um, I apologize for that, but it doesn't appear, appear to be anything technical on, um, on our um on our behalf as far as the uh the system here it's still saying it's choppy this video is choppy um do, uh, do, one moment i apologize hold on one moment Let me check mine and make sure I'm up. It, no one, no one's linked on to the uh, the Wi the, the Wi Fi system, is it? What about now? How does it uh, look now? Is it does it still appear to be choppy? Maybe it's maybe maybe it's fine now. Um, uh, hold on. Okay, I, I apologize. We apologize, brothers and sisters. Uh, maybe uh, this this stream may be a lot better. As I mentioned before, uh, we're having uh, heavy rain here, so that could poss possibly be why um, the video could be choppy. But from our end, it doesn't look choppy. So it's something in the transmission. Okay. So let's let's try and continue. Okay. Hopefully, uh, we, we won't be much longer. So we just left off. Um, we were actually going to read Col Colossians, the third chapter. A little better. Okay. Okay. The widest, a little better. Okay. Great. Good. So uh, let's start off at uh, Colossians, the third chapter, and start from verse 1. Colossians chapter 3, verse 1. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. I like the way this is worded because it says if. Hmm. If you if ye then be risen, or if you rose with the Ashaya during your baptism, you understand, then you shouldn't have any issues if you rose with him. So it's a possibility. You understand I'm saying that you didn't rise with the Ashaya. The, the new man didn't come out of the water. The new woman didn't come out of the water. The old man came out of the water. The old woman possibly came back out of, out of the water. So people need to, we need to all revisit that moment. You understand? I always talk about going back to the water, not going back and get, you know, rebaptized mm -hmm. again, but go back to that day. 
Go back to that moment. Reflect and think on the commitment that you made with the Most High. Go back to that because you, you left something back there or you dropped something along, along the way. All right. <clears throat> Read. If then, if you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. You see that? Seek those things which are above. What are we looking for? We're looking for the kingdom. Mm -hmm. We're looking for everlasting life. We're looking for righteousness. We're looking for change. We're, we're looking to make a difference in ourselves. That's what we're looking for. Those are the things that we're supposed to be seeking for. But why is it that we find ourselves still seeking for things that the old man sought after? What's going on with that? Why aren't we new creatures in Christ? A new creature in Christ, he don't remember what happened yesterday. New creatures in Christ. They don't remember what happened yesterday. They don't remember what happened. You understand? They're not supposed to. They're looking forward. And that's what we need to do. Like, like Paul spoke about, about pressing towards the mark. All right. Read. Well, Christ seated on the right hand of the Most High. Mm -hmm. Set your affection on those on things above. You see that? So now your affections now. See? The things that you desire. The things that you are compassionate about. Are supposed to be on things above. It's not supposed to be on the things that you were dealing with before. People still want physical, carnal, materialistic things. After baptism. They still have a desire. They still have an affection for that. It's something they didn't get. Something they didn't get. Something they never had a, had an opportunity to fulfill. And they still find themselves going back for the experience or going back to find it. Something that they're not even supposed to be concerning themselves about in, in, in this new life that they're living. Because the shy wasn't dealing with those things. New creatures in Christ, they don't deal with the old materialistic things. They don't deal with the old carnal desires, the new creatures in Christ. So something is wrong. All right. Read. Verse two, read. Set your affection on things above, mm -hmm. not on things on the earth. For ye are dead and your life is hid with Christ in the most high. You see that apparently, apparently our life is not dead and I, we ain't hid yet. So I'm still trying to live my life. This is what's happening with some people. If you're still trying to live your life. Whatever life it was, I know a lot of people, you know, still want to be stars, still want to be celebrities, still want to be seen. They still want the bins. You understand? They still want the house. They still want to be noticed. They want to be identified. You're supposed to be hit. Nobody even supposed to see you. But no, nah, that can't be possible. They got to see me, bro. I got to be seen. What do you mean? I can't be seen. You understand? But that's what we deal with. Carnal. Carnal. And we're going to lose our soul because of it. Because we haven't made that transition. We haven't passed over. From the old man to the new man. Or the old creature to the new creature. And that's what we have to do. All right? Read. Verse 4. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. You see that? So... Yeshaya is our life. No, but you still want to be the old man. You still want that life. You want that life. After baptism, you want that life to still uh, premiere. You still want that life to still be noticed and that life to still be seen. The old you. You can't, you, you can't do it because the old you was corruptible. It was a corruptible man. The old you was a corruptible woman. It can't be seen. It can't be noticed anymore. It can't be identified with. People are not even supposed to identify with you anymore. People are supposed to look at you and say, you know what? Wow, yeah. You know, she changed. He changed. He's, he's not the same anymore. Yeah, that's right. That's what people are supposed to see. Not like, yeah, see, he, he's still the same. But that's what we show them. We still show them the old man. After baptism, after all the scriptures we quote, after all the knowledge we try to drop on other people, we still show them the old man. And this is why people look at us like, like we're hypocrites sometimes. And this is why they don't take the truth seriously when you try to bring it to them a lot of times, too. So we end up stagnating other people's growth. Being stumbling blocks to potential candidates for the kingdom. That's what we do. All because we don't want to let go. Still holding on. Read. 
and five. Mm -hmm. Mortify therefore your members which are up on the earth. You see that? So mortify your members now. So now we got to mortify ourselves. Mortify those desires, those passions, those affections. Mortify those things. We have to crucify those things and punish those things now and subdue those things. That's what we have to do now. We have to deny ourselves. All right, read. Mortify therefore your members which are up on the earth. Fornication. Mm. Mortify your members. Mortify your body. Mortify your thoughts. Because all these particulars are things you do in your flesh that you do in your body. So now you have to suffer. That's part of the suffering now. That's part of the suffering that we all have to experience and go through. That you have to allow yourself to be subject to. Because no, you can't feed your flesh anymore. You can't feed your uh your uh your lavish lifestyle anymore. You can't feed your carnal mentality anymore. Because we lost the envy. It's just something in us. But we have to abstain from it and let it go. Catch yourself mid-swing. That's what you gotta do. Catch yourself mid-swing. You have to. Because if you don't, you're going to go all the way into it. And, and, and you understand what I'm saying? Can't nobody tell you nothing after that. Control it. Control it. We have to learn how to control ourselves and discipline. and Bring that spirit down. When it rises up, bring it down. Suppress it. Push it out. Move it out the way. No, nah, I can't do that anymore. I'm not that, I'm, not that old, I'm not that old man anymore. I'm not that kind of fellow anymore. I'm not that kind of sister anymore. I don't think like that anymore. You know, according to the scriptures, you know, I'm not I'm not supposed to function in that manner. These are the things you need to say to yourself. Whatever you need to say to yourself, say it so you can make the change. All right. Read. Fornication, uncleanliness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, mm -hmm. which is idolatry. Mm -hmm. For which things for which things sake. The wrath of the Most High cometh on the children of disobedience. You see that? So when you indulge and deal with all these particulars, you become the wrath. What does it say again? The children of disobedience? For which things sake, the wrath of the Most High cometh on the children of disobedience. Exactly. You become a child of disobedience. So you're now you're not a child of righteousness. You become a child of disobedience, and ultimately the wrath of the Most High comes upon you. That's what happens. All because you want to deal with your flesh. All these particular sins I just mentioned are, are fleshly. Are fleshly. All, all flesh, all dealing with the body, all dealing with sensation. That's what it does. That's what it deals with. All right, this morning. That's it. Okay. No, that's it. Let's get um, let's get first John the second chapter. <clears throat> One more. First John two and um fifteen. Wow. First John chapter two verse fifteen. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. You see that? So the most high he doesn't love the society. This wicked world that we're living in, that, that that has been this construct we're living in, that we've been raised in, that we've been bred in, that we've been corrupted in, he doesn't love it. He hates it. He loves nothing about this society. Because look what look what it has done to his people. Look what it done to us. So a lot of times we 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 have to listen. I'm not afraid to say that this world has destroyed me. I, I would have been a much better man. You understand? I wouldn't have experienced some of the things that I've experienced in this life if it wasn't for this wicked society. You understand what I'm saying? I wouldn't have done, done uh, some of the, the foul things, some of the sinful things, if I wasn't if I if I was living in a society that didn't expose me to these things. This is why a lot of parents try to get their kids into different neighborhoods and, and uh, you know different schools and things like that into different environments. Because this, this environment of sin, it produced us. That's what it did. 
We're a product of our environment. That's a that's actually a really true statement. It's funny. We were, we, we was almost manufactured to, to live and be a certain way by design. But guess what? Now we got to we got to switch that now because we got a new design right here. And we got to use this design now, right? And reconstruct ourselves because we have the blueprint. This is what the Most High was was uh, did in, throughout all those different dispensations and societies when He sent the prophets. He was trying to restore us back to our natural state, which was a, which was a, a, a righteous state. Okay. This morning, verse mm sixteen. -hmm. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Is That's the what's in the world. I apologize for cutting you off. Mm -hmm. That's what's in this world. In this world we live in. What does this what does this world uh what does it what is it geared towards? Look at it. Is is this world geared towards anything righteous, anything peaceful? Is it when you really think about it, think about it. What is this world geared towards? It's geared towards satisfying the flesh, satisfying um the, the visual dealing with sensory perception and the optic nerve and everything. What else? The pride of life. You know, look what I got. Look what, I, look what I've accomplished. I'm, I'm doing well now. You understand? And you take pride in that. Totally lusting to, to be envied. To be admired. That's what you want. And you, you, you're good with that. You can, you can die with that. Isn't that something? <laughs> I'm ready now. Take me to hell. <laughs> Excuse me. But you understand because that's what happens. And some people die like that and be, be content. That's the point I'm trying to make. Who does that? It doesn't make any sense. But that's what people do. Is that? It's more than that? It says at the end of verse 16, it's not of the Father, but it's of the world. Mm. So all these things are not of the Father, but these things are of, of the world, of society, of the construct of the society that, that's, that, that's satanic. All right? Let's get this commentary. Okay. It says, the three things that John mentions in verse 16 are the primary things all men and women fall in, subject, in subjection to in this world. We must transcend transcend these things as Enoch did if we hope to see the kingdom. That's interesting. How do we overcome these things? Okay. The flesh, the eyes, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Mm -hmm. Man, that's everything to me. You can't take that away from me. It's everything to me. That's all I got. That's what makes me me. When I can do these things, when I can have all these things, when I can possess these things, when I can pursue these things, this is what gives me my drive and my, de my determination. I'll die without these things. And that's how we act. That's how we behave. Like, like nothing else matters in the world but except these three principles. That's it. And this is how people live their life, their whole life, their whole existence. No one's thinking about the kingdom, no one's thinking about righteousness, no one's thinking about doing the right thing, no one's thinking about being um, uh, helpful, inviting, supportive, hospitality is just every man for himself. Sad. This morning? Yes, it is. Our often half hearted heart efforts will not get us in. It's our understanding of our ongoing shortcomings that cast doubt and hinder our faith. Mm. This is Satan. This is Satan's primary leverage on us in order to keep us subject to the rules of this physical realm. We must put away our old sinful life to be on a level like our great forefathers and foremothers. You know this reminds me of, it reminds me of how um, how the brother was. Uh, when Yeshua stands at doing it, but I forget what scripture that is um, right now. 
where um, he said, Lord, Lord, have not prophesied in thy name and cast out devils, mm -hmm. done all these great, wonderful works. Mm -hmm. You know, so we try to, we try to, you know, we try to balance things for some apparent reason. You know, we like to try to weigh things, you know, by a scale. Well, okay, I know I've been doing this, but I also have done that too. You understand? It doesn't work that way. You have to be consistent with doing this, with doing righteousness. You can't do birth, uh, both. There's no such thing as, um, you know, 75% uh, righteousness and 25% wickedness. Like, mm -hmm. there's no, that doesn't exist. Okay? Let's move on. Let's get, um, let's get Exodus 24th chapter. Before we do that, let's get 2 Corinthians 2 and 11. Because Elder Rock wanted to touch base on something too. That's interesting. We allow Satan to continue to to, uh, to put us in under these constraints. He condenses us and he keeps us in a box, and he keeps us uh, subject to these particular uh, these particular things. That's what he always give us. That's what he always offers us. So he keeps us in a bubble. All right, and we have to understand the construct of this society that that's that this was deliberate. This wasn't by chance. This was designed. You understand? So now we have to figure out how do we, we're in a trap now. We're in a trap. How do we figure out how do we get out this trap? Okay. Now I know everybody has to uh, sustain themselves in this society. So, okay. The primary thing is, is food, raiment, and shelter. So we need to keep it at that. You understand? Those are the necessities and the particulars that we need. But when we get indulge in all the other things, that's where Satan gets us at. And it's designed that way. Let's get 2 Corinthians 2 and 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. Mm -hmm. Lest Satan should get an advantage Can of us. Go up on, on that thing? Yeah, verse 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10. Mm -hmm. To whom ye to whom you forgive anything, I forgive, forgive also. For if I forgave anything, to whom I forgave it, for your sakes forgave I it. In the person of Christ, lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. That's what happens. Satan gets the advantage over us because he knows what he's been given us. He knows what kind of construct he got us in. So he knows what we desire. He know what we what we what we're um, compassionate about. So that's what he gives us, and he used those things. He dangled the carrot, the fine clothing, the jewelry, the luxury car. You know, the fine um, home, the luxury apartment. He dangled those things in front of us through his media outlets, and he keep us mm -hmm. constantly in 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 desire of these things, the lust of the eyes. So now we spend all of our pursuits in these particular things, all our, our all our ventures, everything that we do, all our, our time, our resources are is spent pursuing these things. So we have to see this now and not allow ourselves to uh you know to be to be utilized in this way or not allow ourselves to be deceived by these particular things because we can't take these things with us. We can't take these things with us, but we're living in a, in a society where we were taught and almost brainwashed and programmed that these things define us, that these things, look, you're not a man. If you don't have a car, you don't have a car. Oh, man, bro, you know, you understand? You're not a man. You're not in. You're not relevant. That's what the society makes you feel like when you don't have a car, when you don't have a house. When you have when you don't have on certain clothing, this society makes you feel like you're not relevant. That's what they do. And it's designed that way. All right. So let's um, let's uh, is, is there more on that? OK, let's get Second Timothy uh, 2 and 26. Because. If we if we don't examine this, OK. We're going to find ourselves in a in um, just constantly being in this in this in this state, in this position where we just find ourselves constantly pursuing these particular things. And this is interesting because this particular this particular mindset 
has been in it has been in throughout all of, not all our generations but i can me now i can go back at least maybe four generations we've been doing these particular things for four generations like our grandfather had these particular pursuits these were the things that he desired and wanted so these were the things that he taught my mother and father you understand what i'm saying so these, these are the things that my mother and father taught me yeah grow up and get a job get yourself together you understand um oh, let me see this me, one moment please um turn the audio off one moment i apologize y'all hold on Hello? I think that's it. All right. I'm sorry. Y'all hear the audio now, right? I apologize, y'all. Technical difficulties. We'll edit the video later. Okay? I apologize for the interruption. Okay? Um, yeah, we're going to have to edit this. Okay, so let's get back to where we were. I apologize once again. Um, let's, um, where did we leave off at? Um, Second Timothy. Timothy's, yes. Second Timothy's 2 and 26. Uh, because LD Rock was, was uh, touch, wanted me to touch base on the aspect of how that we shouldn't be ignorant. This is what he wants us, you know, this is what we have to see, how we shouldn't uh, allow ourselves to continue to be ignorant to Satan device. We know that this, these are the things that he used. These are his utensils. These are his tools. So why do we always fall for the same uh, scenario? He, he don't even, he, Satan, he don't even have to uh, get, uh, be innovative anymore. Like I was saying, the same thing that our grandfather, our grandparents were in pursuit of, we are in pursuit of three and four generations later. The same mindset, the same cycle. Look, grow up, get yourself together, you know, get, uh, you know, get a good job and get yourself together and, and um, you know, and just, you know, get a, get a city job. You understand? Get a government job. I was brainwashed with that. You understand? Like, you know, go, go be a slave. <laughs> you understand? To, to society. That's, that's what we were taught. You understand? So everybody's in that mindset. Well, we have to break this spell. You understand? And we have to break this cycle. Okay, and the only way for us to break that curse that the most I have on us is to return back unto him, you understand, and examine ourselves and start living a life of righteousness. All right. So um let's get second Timothy's, the second chapter, and let's read uh two and twenty six. Second Timothy chapter two, verse twenty six. Mm -hmm. And that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil. That's the interesting part about that. That's what we have to do. We have to recover ourselves out of the snare of Satan, out of the snare of the traps that has been laid, out of the snares of this construct. We have to recover ourselves out of that because there's no, when you really think about it, there's no real benefit. You really don't achieve true happiness until you achieve true spirituality. Because you can get all the physical things. Okay, I, I, got, I, I got the house, got the car, I got the jewel, I, I dress fashionably. You know, you know, I have a hundred thousand dollars in my bank account. I mean, what else do I need? 
What am I missing? You find out what you're missing when everybody go home when the party's over and you're sitting in your apartment by yourself. Ashamed of the sins you committed previously. Think about everything that you did. That's when you start thinking, oh, you know, was it really worth it? I feel defiled. I feel unclean. I don't, I don't feel right. I did all these things in the eyes of the most high. And you, that's when you find out that it's not worth it. That's when your shame come upon you. That's when you find out that none of it was worth it. Okay. But that's how they got it. That's how they got things. They got us in pursuit of these things. And then it's, especially for us, it's difficult for us because we've been so down, um, downtrodden. We've been so um, uh, disenfranchised. You understand what I'm saying? We don't really, we lack the opportunity. You understand what I'm saying? To do certain things, to get certain things and obtain certain things in society. So we, we just, you know, when we get things or, or when we don't have things, we, we have this strong sense of urgency to go after those things because we've been deprived of those things all our lives. You understand? As Israelites, you understand? We've been, we, we've been deprived. Okay, but we have to examine that too and fight against that too and realize that if we don't have those things, we need to be content with what we have in, this, in the state that we're in because those things, it doesn't matter at the end of the day. We spend all our lives in pursuit of carnal uh, and materialistic and worldly things for what? For nothing. For what? For nothing. Only to give it to someone else. At the end of the day, you work hard all your life. You slave all your life for, for the American dream. Only to give it to someone else and for them not to have any respect for it. For them to trample over it after you give it to them, after you don't work hard. And a lot of us who are parents understand that. You work hard and build things for your family and your children. And as soon as they inherit it, what do they do with it? They squander it. They don't take care of it. They mismanage it. So you did all that for nothing. And you in hell. Was it worth it? You know, a lot of us going to end up like Lazarus. Where we at? Verse 26. And they, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, who are taken captive by him at his will. That's interesting. So now we have to recover ourselves out of the traps of Satan because we're taken captive. We're in bondage and we don't even realize it. At his will, at his will, we are taken captive and we're in bondage. Why? Because when he want to put it, when he want to put out a, a media ad, we're at his will. We're at his beck and call. Put out the new, the new, the new 2017 series, the M3. What do we have a will to do and a desire to do? To go purchase it and buy it. Put out the new 2017 iPhone, whatever it is. Just put it out there. That's being at his will. Because Satan is working through all these mediums. So that's how we find ourselves in bondage. You understand what I'm saying? Through these physicalities. We find ourselves in bondage at his will. That's just on a physical level. Then on a spiritual level, we find ourselves at his will when it comes to the seduction and the temptation. We find ourselves at his will. And every time he come with that right thing that we like, what do we do? We open up our arms and we embrace him. That's what we do. Anytime. I've had that experience myself. I'm just being honest. Thought I was on point, thought I was strong, thought I was strengthened. He come out of nowhere, broke me. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> broke me. That's what happens. And we got to fight against that. Collectively and on an individual level, we all have to fight and, 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 just, and just shake this, shake it, and over, actually overcome it and be consistent about it. Because it's just that important. Why? Because our life depends upon it. When are we going to get tired of rolling the dice? When? When do we get tired of gambling with our lives? Okay. Let's sit on that, right? Okay, let's get back to the 24th chapter. Mm 
Like this 24. Let's start from verse um one moment. You get it? Make this 24 and let's start from verse 12. Yeah. Exodus chapter 24, 24, verse 12. Mm -hmm. And the most high said unto Moses, Come up to me into the mount and be there, and I will give thee table of stone and a law and commandments, which I have written that thou mayest teach them. And Moses rose up, and his minister Joshua, and Moses went up into the mount of the Most High. And he said unto the elders, Tarry ye here for us, until we come again unto you. And behold, Aaron and Hur are with you. If any man have any matters to do, let him come unto them. And Moses went up into the mount, and a cloud covered the mount. And the glory of the Most High abode upon the Mount Sinai. And the cloud covered it six days. And the seventh day he called unto Moses out of the midst of the cloud. And in, in the sight of the glory of the Most High was like devouring fire on the top of the mount in the eyes of the children of Israel. And Moses went into the midst of the cloud and gave him up into the mount. And Moses was in the mount 40 days and 40 nights. So right, this is Moses going before the Most High. To receive the law from the children of Israel. Okay, but we need to see the spiritual significance of this because this is what we need to do. We need to go before the Most High also and deal with the law and and, and show uh uh and um prostrate ourselves before him, okay, and receive the law and get ourselves together. All right, let's read this commentary. There was a serious meeting between the spiritual realm and the physical realm. That we are that we were able to witness from afar. The problem is, if we hope to to be close to Yesh if we hope to be close to Yeshaya like Moses, we must separate ourselves from the wicked world spiritually first. That's the point that he was driving at. Tell you was driving at. The same way Moses went up to the Most High. Remember, we when when before Moses went up to the Most High, he dealt with the purification process also too. Took off the shoe that was on his feet. He he bathed himself. He made sure that he was clean. And even before, be, be, even before the Most High made the initial commitment, when we all was about to go up to, uh, to him, he told us to not to uh, come near our wives. Also, so the Most High is dealing with purity, and that's what I want. I want y'all to see that we have to start dealing with this with the uh, with a state and a sense of purity also, in preparation before we go to the Most High. All right. What's wrong with that? It says the alternative is we will be amongst the fear, the fearful like our fathers who were in complete fear when Yeshua came down. You see that? So where's our fear at? Fear at? That's that's the beginning aspects of serving the Most High, right? It's having fear for Him, respecting Him, and having and reverencing Him. A lot of times we don't even have that. Let me get a piece of get Hebrews the tenth chapter, Hebrews ten and nineteen. Yeah, that's an interesting point how Moses he went up into the cloud. So Moses, this this right here, what Moses did was symbolic for what the Levite priests would do later on when they went before the holies of holies, when they went be, beyond beyond the second veil. They were in his presence, the same way Moses was in the most high presence, the same way we now do prayer when we prostrate and pray to the most high. Or we're standing, whatever, on our knees, whatever. You understand? We're in the Most High's presence. All right? Is that Hebrews 10 and 19? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's read that. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 19. Mm -hmm. okay. having, therefore, having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holy, holiest by the blood of Yeshua. You see that? So we don't have that boldness, though, but we need to have the boldness, but we should have it. But why don't we have it? Because when Moses went before the Most High, he was he was bold. He, he, he wasn't too afraid to walk into the cloud. He was afraid to walk into the cloud, but he wasn't afraid to walk. He was afraid to walk into the cloud because of the, the fear and the preeminence and the, the, the magnitude of the Most High. That's what his fear came from. It didn't come from sin like ours do. We we can't be bold like yeah. Let me go up here and 
get on my knees and pray to the most high so I can receive this blessing. A lot of times, you know, we we barely want to do that when we, when we know we haven't been right. So read on. Verse 20. By a new and living way, which, which he had consecrated us for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh, and having an high priest over the house of the Most High. So now we have now um I haven't noticed the lesson kind of switched. I know a lot of y'all looking. Mm -hmm. So we kind of switched it, okay? Okay, y'all because I wanted to give it for another direction. But now we're dealing with self-examination and purification now when we when we go before the most high and deal with them. Because that's what it's that's what it's a we can't we can't forget that either. That we also have to deal with the cleanliness aspect too. Okay. The spiritual cleanliness and also the physical cleanliness aspect of approaching the most high's altar all right so ephesians 2 and, and uh, 18 mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. ephesians chapter 2 verse 18 mm -hmm. for through him we both have an access by one spirit unto the father right so through your yeshia we have that access now okay moses went you understand was invited into that access you're able, he had access to the Most High. The same way the the, living, the the priest had access to the Most High to go beyond the second veil. Now we personally have it now. So we, we need to think about that. Really think about that. You have access now to go where the Levite priest went through prayer and stand in the same place. And of course, Matthew Moses, you know, his was really physical. You understand, but there's, there's not too much of a difference because the Most High is he, he's embracing us the same way he, he embraced Moses. It's the same thing, even though Moses dealt with some of the physicalities of it. You understand what I'm saying? We deal with the physicalities of it through spirit, through, through, through the spiritual method of prayer now. But it's still the same thing. It's still the Most High listening to us like he listened to Moses. We can communicate with him the way Moses was able to communicate with him. The same with the priest communicated with them. We're, we're now able to do that through Yeshaya. So we can't take that lightly. So we, you know, so going back to the, the topic of the lesson, we need to think about what our destiny is, what our purpose is, what our responsibility is as being the most child's chosen people and just being called into this work, being called in general just to identify with the most high and his magnificence and his righteousness. We have to we have to really consider that and think about that now. All right, there's more on that. Okay, let's get Hebrews the ninth chapter, Hebrews nine and eight. Okay, Hebrews chapter nine verse eight. The Holy Spirit then signified that the way into the holiness of all was not yet made manifest. Mm -hmm. While as the first tabernacle was yet standing. Right, because ultimately the most high wanted us to, to uh, be able to be in a position where we can present ourselves to him personally. It wasn't made, it wasn't manifested yet. Because ultimately what he wanted was for us to be able to stand before him through prayer and praise. All right, read. Verse 9, which was a figure for the time then present mm -hmm. in which in which was offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make him that did the service perfect as pertaining to the conscience mm -hmm. which stood only in the meats and drinks and diverse washings and carnal ordinance imposed on them until the time of reformation but christ being come and high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle not made with hands mm -hmm. Okay. 
2 <clears throat> Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through the most high to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations. That's what we need to cast down. Okay. Start from the top of your reading again, three again. Verse 3. For though we walk not in the flesh, for though we walk in the flesh. Right, because we're walking in our flesh right now. Because we're in these physical bodies. So we're walking and moving and doing everything right now in our bodies. We, we do not war after the flesh. Right, but our war is not necessarily after the flesh. Even though we have struggles in our flesh. And there's a war taking place in the flesh. But initially, this war is not a fleshly physical war. It's spiritual. All right? We, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Right, because the weapons that we need to fight to get into the kingdom and to overcome these obstacles, it's not physical. You understand? It's, it's, it's spiritual. It's mental. Okay, read. But mighty through the most high. Mm -hmm. To the pulling down of stronghold. Right, so now the stronghold got to be pulled down now. Who got the stronghold? Satan. This society, this world now, have the stronghold over our minds. And by them having a the stronghold over our minds through man media man uh, manipulation and different things like that, they have the stronghold over our bodies now. You know, right? Read. Five. Casting down imagination. Right, so imaginations now have to be cast down. Our imaginations, because it really started with their imagination, with them wanting to implement these different things in, in, in society and in, in, in life, in our lives, rather. Then we then we took it on now. They don't even have to really implement too much now. Now we're imagining lustful things. We're imagining carnal things. Without, without the influence as much anymore. But they just keep the influence going through media and advertisement just to keep us in this state, just to, just to lock us in, keep, keep feeding them. Yeah, 2017, that's like, what? You, you, got, you still got a 2016? Man, you understand what I'm saying? You had a 2017, something wrong. So every year, they're doing these, up, these upgrades to constantly keep you locked in. And look, give me a... Give me a 57 Chevy. I'm good. <laughs> you understand? As long as it still runs. I don't have to have a 2017. But because they got us in that construct, like, and it's not a tech. Anybody out there or anybody here, got, I know people get new cars every year. They go up to that next model. It's, it's, I know that's the standard. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, I got the 2017, you know. And I, I got the 2018, and it's not even 2018 yet, but I got it. You know, so we deal with that. But they know what we deal with. They do this deliberately to lock us in and to keep us trained. Okay? And to keep us running after that lifestyle, because we're running after them and never running after the most high. We're running, we're not even, like, we're not even running, running the race Paul spoke about. We're running another race. We're running the, the we need to call that race the Joneses. The Joneses Marathon. We've been running that thing hard for years. Okay. Just going out. He said, verse five, mm -hmm. casting down the imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself mm -hmm. against the knowledge of the Most High, mm -hmm. and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. And that's what we need to do. We got to bring all those things. So now, what do we do? So we're not ignorant now of Satan devices now, right? So now we have to contemplate and we have to think about all these things now. Okay? Think about the things you want to do. Think about your, your desires, what you're compassionate about, what you're affectionate about. Think about, about those things and try to gauge those things, you understand, on whether it's right or wrong to have those things. Is this a, a necessity that I really need to have this? You understand? What, am I, what will I have to do to get this? What will I have to sacrifice to get this? What would I have to sacrifice or lose to maintain this? We have to think about those things because a lot of times these things take us into negativity and it take us into carnality. Just trying to manage and maintain these things or just trying to pursue and get these things. You know, a lot of people don't want to turn to a life of crime, but they turn to a life of crime, which is sin and transgression. You understand? For the most part, against the most high, just to get these these um, these materialistic items. So that's how they got us locked in. If we would just deal with what Paul said and just be content, 
You're eating every day. You got a roof over top of your head. You got some clothes on. I know they're they not fancy. But listen, you're covered. If we would just settle for that, a lot of us wouldn't indulge in a lot of the simple activities and behavior that we do. Okay? It's more than that. It says, verse 6, last verse. It says, in heaven and a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Mm -hmm. Okay. It says, there's a process that every every possessed follower of the Most High in Yeshaya must go through. Once you have left off from sin and learned to control your thoughts by following the Father's will under, will under Yeshaya, you will then be ready to truly help edify others. This process of obedience also prepares your spirit for battles in the unseen realm. Interesting. So it's a process. It's a mission process in baptism. Mm -hmm. Then disciplining yourself to abstain from, from old man after baptism. It's the process. It's, it's actually uh, it's a good word to use process, but it's like, a, it's like an operation. You understand? It doesn't happen overnight. You go through these stages. A lot of times we're going to, we, you know, we go through stages after baptism. You know, you go through a stage. You understand where you're making mistakes and you're stepping and you're falling and you're backsliding and things like that. But you don't stay in that state, though. You understand? Think about all the other uh, things that's related to, to uh, you know, staying in a certain state. Like, you know, who, who stays in the first grade all your life? Mm -hmm. You graduate. You understand sometimes you graduate from, from high school or you, are, what, you know, uh, uh, kindergarten, elementary school, junior high, high school, college. You understand? You go to a university, you, you graduate, you grow, you evolve, you develop. And but it's the same thing when it comes to this knowledge and this truth. It seems like a lot of times we just we just come into the knowledge and the truth and stand still. And that's it. Or get baptized and we stand still. And that's it. Making no real spiritual progress and growth. Only deceiving ourselves, like James said. That's what we really do. Because we come around everybody else and we pretend like we're on a level. We pretend like we've been growing. But behind closed doors, you know you ain't right. You understand? The most I know it too. So, but why do we why do we stay content though? Why do we just settle for that though? Like why? Because that doesn't get us anywhere. That still that still gets you hell. Okay, you've been you've been you've been informed. You've been awakened to the knowledge and the truth. You've been baptized. Okay. What next? You understand? When, when do you come to the fullness of the statue of your shot? When do you come to perfection? What about that? That's that's when you mastered your craft. When you get to that stage. So until then, we have to keep striving and keep fighting. And keep perfecting ourselves and working on ourselves so we can get to that stage where we're not even dealing with certain sin, um, certain sin. A lot of us think about it. A lot of us have abstained from certain things that we don't do any, that we haven't done anymore. A lot of us have gotten over certain obstacles and certain vices that had a stronghold on us. And we don't even do those things anymore. Let's get over sin like that. Let's get over sin like that. And never actually, in, and never actually indulge in sin and wickedness again. Okay? We had Exodus 34th chapter? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's get Exodus the 34th chapter. Okay? Thirty-four. And let's start from verse twenty-seven. Exodus thirty-four, verse twenty-seven. Mm -hmm. And the Most High said unto Moses, Write down, write thou these words. For after the tenor of these words, I have made a covenant with thee, and with Israel. And he was there with the Most High forty days and forty nights. He did neither eat bread nor drink water, and he wrote upon the table 
upon the table is the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. And it came to pass when Moses came down from the Mount Sinai with the two tables of testimony in Moses' hand. When he came down from the Mount, that Moses wist not that the skin of his face was shown while he talked with him. And when Aaron and all the children of Israel saw Moses, behold, the skin of his face shone, and they were afraid to come nigh him. And Moses called unto them, and Aaron and all the all the rulers of the congregation returned unto him. And Moses talked with them, and, a, and afterward all the children of Israel came nigh. And he gave them in commandment all that the Most High had spoken with him in Mount Sinai. Until Moses had done speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. But when Moses went in before the Most High to speak with him, he took the veil off until he, until he came out. And he came out and spake unto the children of Israel, that which he was commanded. And the children of Israel saw the face of Moses, that the skin of Moses' face shone. And Moses put the veil upon his face again until he went, into the, until he went in to speak with him. That's it. So Moses was when he was in the presence of the Most High for such a, for that period of time, he he was receiving the law. He was getting the knowledge, and that 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 the uh, the aura that he had it was the light. You understand? And that light is symbolic to Yeshua. It's symbolic to Christ. He was illuminated with information. So we also have to allow ourselves to be illuminated with the information also, or just with the light. All right. He's growing up. Okay, let's move on. Let's get um this commentary here. When Moses yeah, okay. It says when Moses returned from the mount the second time, the people were afraid because of the glory which was shining from his face. Mm -hmm. Their own sinful act acts increased their fear being they had worshipped another God just prior to Moses leaving for the mount. This is another example of the same process as Enoch through Moses. By separating himself from the people in their sometimes carnal ways, he was able to deal with the incorruptible realm in order to bring truth to those that were still subject to sin. That's the second edge of the first chapter. Because a lot of people had, they was guilty, they was shamed. Because mm -hmm. Moses went up to get the law from the Most High. He said, listen, I'm going up there to get the law from the Most High. Y'all hold tight till I get back. Mm -hmm. So he went up, but he took so long. When he came back down, everybody was just ashamed. And, th and that's when the fear fell upon them because they knew that they were wrong, that they transgressed, they, that they should have just held tight. They should have just been consistent and been more patient. You understand? And we need to examine that too. A lot of times we, we're impatient. We don't want to wait because we're looking for the quick fix. We want things done immediately. And as soon as we don't get a response, what do we do? Go right back to our sin. Oh, like most he's not working fast enough. The most is not on our clock. He's on his clock. Hmm. The most I do for you when he get do good and ready to. That's when he's sending you your blessing. But because you've been praying, finally, you praying consistently for a couple of weeks. Hmm. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Because you know you're not really consistent, but you're praying for a couple of weeks now. I've been consistent for 21 days. You know, and I ain't get the blessing yet. Now you want to go off and make a move and try to do it yourself. Boy, we're funny. I'm trying to tell you. Where we at? Second Ezra. Second Ezra. <laughs> One and verse 12. Yeah, they couldn't wait. So when Moses came down, they probably. Oh, they felt bad. I don't know if I just would have waited. You know, I've been there before. Didn't wait for the most high. You understand? I ended up needing bell money. <laughs> Not waiting for the most high one time. And it cost me more money. You understand? All I had to do was just wait. <laughs> yeah. Taking things into your own hand. Instead of trusting in the most high. Um, okay, second Ezra, All right? Second Ezra chapter one, verse 12. Okay. Speak thou therefore unto them, saying, Thus saith the Most High, mm -hmm. I led you through the sea, and in the beginning gave you a large 
and safe passage. I gave you Moses for a leader and Aaron for a priest. I gave you light in a pillar of fire and great wonders have I done among you. Yet have you forgotten me, said the Most High. So you forget the Most High provided everything we need to that experience. And we forget the Most High had provided everything we needed thus up this far in different experiences that we may have had. He still gave us what we what we needed. But because it wasn't what we wanted, you understand, we kind of felt differently about it. We thought that, well, mm -hmm. you know, this is not what I what I wanted. But it's it's what you needed. All right. The most high just gives us our necessities. You understand? And a lot of times when the most high doesn't give you certain things you need, it's because you probably really didn't need it. Mm. It probably would have been a detriment to you to have it. Because mm. a lot of times we we pray for things so so we so we can just, you know, utilize it upon upon our lust and our desire a lot of times. A lot of times, things that we did, that we pray for are not really necessities. Mm -hmm. Okay. Morning. Verse fifteen. Thus <clears throat> said the Almighty Power. Mm -hmm. The quails were as a token for you. Mm -hmm. So the quail was, was a sign. It was something that we could identify with what we did. That's like a lot of times we miss certain things the Most High do for us in our life, and we take it for granted, and we miss it, not even really seeing it and understanding what the Most High is trying to show us. But we're so carnal that that we miss it. Okay. Mm -hmm. I gave you tents for your safeguard. Nevertheless, you murmured there. Mm -hmm. And triumph not in my name for the destruction of your enemies. But ever to this day do you yet murmur. What are the benefits that I have done for you? That's tomorrow. What are the benefits that the most I have done for us? We all need to think about that. Read. When you were when you when you were hungry and thirsty in the wilderness, did you did not did you not cry unto me, saying, Why has thou brought us into this wilderness to kill us? It had been better for us to have served the Egyptians than to die in, the, in this wilderness. Then I had pity upon your your mornings and gave you manna to eat. So, so, so you did eat angels bread. When you were thirsty, did I not, did I not cleave the rock and the waters flowed out to, to your field? For the heat I have covered you with the leaves of the trees. I divided among you the fruitful land. I cast out the, Canaan, the Canaanites and the Perizzites and the Philistines before you. What shall I yet do more? Boy, size is what? What else do I got to do for you? <laughs> Think about it. Think about all the things. Now, this is the, these are just things the Most High did for our forefathers. But we all need to think about and reflect on what the Most High have done for us throughout our lives, throughout the past, recently. We all need to think about these things. What, where's the benefit at? You know, what, know where the benefit at? You're still alive. Yeah. First of all, that's the first benefit still alive when you're not dead because all of us should be so that's the first benefit on top of that think about all the times the most high delivered you now yeah, of course there's been some times where you understand i went through some situations but the most high wanted me to learn from those situations he wanted me to, to develop a strength from those situations he was testing my fortitude let me see if he gonna break you understand and then some things you gotta go through you can't think you're supposed to escape punishment all the time. You have to have the experience. You have to suffer. We're no greater than your Shia was. So sometimes you're going to have hardships. Settle that in your mind. That you're going to go through some, some, some rocky roads. Just, just deal with it. And be patient when you're changed to a lower state, like the scripture says. Because you don't stay in that lower state. Nobody stays low forever. At some point in time throughout the course of your life, you have ups and you have downs. That's just life. Okay. This morning. Okay, let's move on. Let's get um let's read this commentary here. It says, The Father gave us far more than we ever deserved as a rebellious people. 
Even until this day, with thousands of signs and wonders that the kingdom will soon come, we are rebellious and murmur against him and those that speak of him so that you will be better to know so that you will better know him. Hmm. What has what has the most high not done for us? And then we we see we're in a time period where we know that he's he, that Yeshua is, is, is getting ready to make an entrance, that he's coming back. And we're still like in a state of like like it, we're just we're, we're just nonchalant about it. After everything that we've been witnessing these past couple of years, everything that we're witnessing now in society and in the world, a lot of people are still not looking at that as as a sense of urgency to get themselves together. I don't understand it. Rona? It says, we have if we tasted the bread of heaven and murmured, how much more do we murmur in the physical absence of the bread of life? Mm -hmm. We have a lot to learn. Second of his second chapter, let's talk about verse 35. Second Ezra chapter 2, verse 35. Mm -hmm. Be ready to reward of the king, be ready to the reward of the kingdom. For the everlasting light shall shine upon you forevermore. That's interesting. So we should be ready, right? So be ready to the reward of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. How many of us are ready to receive the reward of the kingdom? How many? Because it's coming. So we should be preparing ourselves so we can be ready to receive our reward. So we can be ready to receive our crown. But a lot of us, we don't want the crown because we're not working towards getting it. Read. For the everlasting light shall shine upon you forevermore. Mm -hmm. Flee the shadow of this world. That's what we have to do. Flee the shadow of this world. Flee the shadow of the society that we're living in. Flee the the the, uh, the lust, okay. Flee the sinful things that we love to indulge in, that this society upholds us. Those are the things we have to abstain from and separate ourselves from, okay. Read. Receive the joyfulness of your glory. I testify, my Savior, openly. Hmm. Oh, receive the gift that is given you and be glad. Right. So receive the gift that has been given us. Receive this opportunity. Gift of everlasting life instead of everlasting torment. Receive that. It's been offered to us. We've been invited. We've been called. But a lot of times we don't act like it. We all of us have received an invitation. And we need to appreciate that. Okay? Read. Oh, receive the gift that is given you and be glad, giving thanks unto him that had called you. To the heavenly kingdom. That's right. That's what we've been called for. And a lot of us take that for granted. And a lot of us don't even appreciate it. That we've been given this opportunity to come into this knowledge and this truth. Okay. And restore ourselves so we can have an opportunity to receive the kingdom or to enter into the kingdom. Because all of us was destined for death. All of us. Was destined. For hell. But the Most High gave us an opportunity to examine ourselves and get ourselves together and acknowledge the one and true power of the earth. Okay, read. Verse 38. Mm -hmm. Arise and stand. Behold the number of those that be sealed in the feast of the Most High. Right. That's what we should be thinking about. We should be wondering, are we part of that number? We should be. We should be part of that number. Why, why can't we be a part of that number? How do you know? If you're a part of the number or not. That's why the scriptures talks about making our election sure. You can make your election sure. You can have it in the bag. If you're willing to live accordingly. And make the adjustments in your life that needs to be made for you to obtain it. You can do it. You have the opportunity. It's been presented to all of us. Okay. Read. Verse 39. Which are departed from the shadow of the world and have received. Can you read that again? Verse 38. Mm -hmm. Arise up and stand. Behold the number of those that be sealed in the feast of the Most High. Right. So those that be sealed in the feast of the Most High. What did they do in 39? 
which are departed from the shadow of the world. See, they departed from the shadow of the world. They left society. They didn't do it first John 2 and 15. They understood that. They hated the world. They left it. All the things that was negative. Okay. All the things that were corruptible, all the things that were sinful, all the things that would, would put them in a position where they would transgress against the most high. They denied it. They abstained from it. That's what they did. So only those who do these particular things are going to be still in part of that number. Okay. Read. And have received glorious garments of the Most High. Mm, and have received glorious garments. That's the spirit, the fruits of the spirit, the spirit of Yeshia. Okay. It's, it's not the garment that you think it is. Okay. It's not the Passover garment. <laughs> All right. Read. Verse 4. Save thy number, O Zion, and shut up those of thine that are clothed in white. Mm, so take your number. Where's your number? Which is your number? Take your number. Claim your number. Listen, this is my position. This is my number. I don't I don't know what number it is, but I know I'm counting. This is the number. I want to hold on to this number. I want to hold on to this seat. All right. Read. They have fulfilled the law of the most high. Mm. Read. The number of thy children, whom thou alone is for, is fulfilled. Beseech the power of the Most High, that thy people, which which have been called from the beginning, may be hallowed. Let's see. Okay. It said the world is actually. It says the world is actually a shadow of the of the real world to come. Adam. In a select few saw the real world, and we merrily get glimpse of the heavenly. Those that flee the darkness that this wicked world contains and begin to focus on the spiritual things will be rewarded. With Yeshia, when Yeshia, with Yeshia comes light and darkness will eventually be rooted out. Mm -hmm. Right. It says second Ezra chapter because, because this is this is what everyone should be in pursuit of. This is what we should be destined for. Okay. <clears throat> this is greatness right here. Okay, this is like the Olympics. All right. This is what what they, these brothers and sisters who were sealed in this feast, they work for that. And it kind of remind me of like the Olympics. How you go to a lot of people train all their life for the gold, mm -hmm. for the medal. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And that's what we have to do. We have to have that same mindset and look at it in the same way. But listen, you got to train all your life. Okay? They were they were consistent. They were doing strength training. You understand? They were disciplining themselves. They were they did whatever they needed to do. They were working out eight hours a day. They, they did what they needed to do. You understand, so they can reap the um, the carnal uh, benefit, which which is the gold medal. We need to have that same mindset so, so that we can reap the spiritual benefit, which is the kingdom. Okay. Second Ezra chapter two verse forty one. Mm -hmm. The number of thy children whom thou longest for is fulfilled. Mm -hmm. Deceased the power of the Most High, that thy people which have been called from the beginning may be hallowed. Mm -hmm. I Ezra saw upon Mount upon the Mount Sion, a great people, whom I could not number, and they all praise the Most High with songs. So this is what Ezra saw. All right, read verse forty-three. And in the midst of them, there was a young man of a high stature, taller than all the rest, and upon every one of their heads he set crowns, and was more exalted, which I marvelled at greatly. So I asked the angel and said, Sir. What are these? He answered and said unto me, These be they that have put off the mortal clothing and put on immortal. That's interesting because that's the promise. They put off the, the, uh, the immortal clothing, or excuse me, the mortal clothing to put on the immortal clothing. All right, read. And have confessed the name of the Most High. Mm -hmm. Now are they crowned and receive palms. Mm -hmm. Then said I unto the angel, what young person is it that crowned them and giveth them palms in their hands? 
So he answered it. So he answered and said unto me, It is the Son of the Most High, whom they have confessed in this world. Then well, begin. Hmm. That's what the confession was in. It wasn't always verbally. You understand? It was in the in that walk, in that performance, when it came to the law, when it came to them obtaining the righteousness and things like that. That's part of your, your profession too, also. Because a lot of times we profess verbally, but we're not profess professing physically when it comes to being adherent to the law. Okay? More on that. Then begin I greatly to commend them. That they that stood so stiffly for the name of the Most High. That stood stiffly. That should be us. That's supposed to be us. Standing firm, standing strong, standing stiffly. You understand? Not being moved by Satan. Not fluctuating. Not being tossed to and fro as a wave, like the Scripture speaks about. Always being consistent. Always being firm. Never indulging in sinful activities. That's the mindset that we need to be in. Those are the ones that obtain these this, this crown. Okay, read verse forty-eight. Then the angel said unto me, Go thy way and tell my people what manner of things and how great wonders of the Most High thy power has seen. Mm -hmm. Thou has seen. Right. So this is part of the gospel. That's what people should be teaching about all the magnificent things that that the Most High have done for them in their lives. That we should be giving our testimony the same way that we gave his testimony. What he bear witness to and see. All right. So let's read Ezekiel the 33rd chapter. Or is it coming over here? I bypassed no. that. Did I bypass that? No, I read that. Okay. Let's get Ezekiel the 33rd chapter. Okay. Get more on fleeing the shadow of this world. Right. Ezekiel 34 and um, 30, 33. Mm -hmm. Okay. 33. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ezekiel chapter 33, verse 30. Also, thou son of man, the children of thy people still are talking against thee by the walls and in the doors of the houses, and speak one to another, every one to his brother, saying, Come, I pray you, and hear what is there. Hear what is the word that cometh forth from so the this Most is High. Interesting. So the knowledge is out now. Everybody know about the Israelites. Everybody know about the the, the, the real Jews are, are, are black. You yeah, understand? Everybody know about the twelve tribes of Israel. The truth is out here, and people are talking about it. Okay, but that's all people are doing. Not everybody. Not everybody. There's a large amount of people who are converting, who are changing, who are making a difference and changing their lives. But it's still a conversational topic, okay, in society. All right, read. Verse 31. And they come unto thee as, a, as the people coming, and they sit before thee as my people, and they hear thy words, but they will not do them. And this is interesting, too, and it's making reference to how we be out at camp. Brothers be speaking and teaching, dropping the knowledge. People come up, they listen, they have an interest, they relate to it, they know that it's the truth, and they hear it. You understand that feeling it, they know it's the truth, mm. but yet they don't do it. Okay, and that's a, ha a bad habit we have. We know the truth, but we don't do the truth. All right, read. For with their mouth, they show much love, mm -hmm. but their heart goeth after their covetousness. With their mouth, we show much love. With their mouth, we that's right. Yeah, I checked that out. You know, he's right. What he's saying. What those brothers are preaching. But people still don't make a difference. They still don't change. They still go after that covetous. They still go after the, 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 uh, the old man. They still be that same person knowing they need to change. Knowing, identifying with what they're doing is sinful and wrong. But yet still stay in that state. Shake their head in the grease and everything. But then go back, go right back and, and, and sin. That's our people. Three. Verse 32. Mm -hmm. And lo, thou art unto them as a very lovely song. And then it's like we're a song to them. 
They come out every weekend, listen, or they log on to the class every Sabbath and listen. They watch all the videos and listen. Read. And lo, thou art unto them as a very lovely song mm -hmm. of one that had a pleasant voice mm -hmm. and, and can play well on the instrument. Yeah, that brother, he, he's a great poet. So he sounds good. Elder Gordy has such a deep voice. Mm -hmm. Elder Carr, he's such a great speaker. You understand? That's what I hear a lot. You understand? Let's read that later a lot, brother. Read. For they hear thy words, mm -hmm. but they do not they do them not. Right. So a lot of people hear the word, but they never do it. And it sounds good to them, but that's all they do. It just sounds good. It sounds like it's the truth, but it sounds like it's the truth. That sounds like it. yeah, that's, that's the truth. <laughs> you know how we that, that's the truth. You understand? But okay, brother, if it's the truth, <laughs> why aren't you making a change in your life? You understand? Why don't you want to stop doing what you're doing if it's the truth? I don't get it. What's going on? That? Yeah, it's verse 33. And when this cometh to pass, lo, and it will, lo, it will come. Because that's what happened with, with Enoch. Enoch was coming, you know, one day, a couple of months, and then after mm -hmm. he had his sin, and then he was looking right here. And then, of course, when he was saying, he started seeing and bearing witness to what Enoch was prophesying. And that's what happened. Now you want to make the inquiry now. Now you want to send an email and now you want to call. Mm -hmm. Yo, the Yo, I want to tell them call. But Elder McCall been teaching for, for years now. Mm -hmm. You understand? No, nobody's been paying attention. I'm not saying nobody's been paying attention, but you know what I mean. You understand? But as soon as these prophecies start taking place, mm -hmm. now they ain't like, yeah, 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 yeah. That brother was right. Well, McCall was dropping stuff seven and eight years ago, and now it's happening. And now people are, 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 are sending the emails and people are calling and wanting to know what they need to do. I mean, they could have eight years of preparation, wasted all that time when you could have got it, you know, then and been in a, in a much more better state right now. Now you're trying to play catch up now. You understand? And you're rushing with that and you're impatient about it. Okay. It's growing up. Verse 33. Mm -hmm. And when it come to pass, lo, it will come. Mm -hmm. So when the prophecies <clears throat> that, that our brothers have been teaching and talking about, the elders, when it says, Lo, that these things will come, and they have came to pass. Read. Then shall they know that, that a prophet had been among them. And that's when everybody realized, realized that a prophet had been among them. That the prophets were out. The most I sent the prophets years ago to prophesy about what would be and taking place in these last days and times, and it's happening now. Now, every now the light bulb goes off, it's going off now. All right, this morning, that's it, my right? So, people need to take advantage of the opportunity that they have now to continue to get this knowledge and get this information and prep and prepare themselves, okay, for this final outcome. Okay, we're almost done. Let's read, uh, this. Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. If we claim we follow the truth, mm -hmm. then the truth must live in us and guide our lives. Our people have always gone to church, but how many leave the church and still live in righteousness when nobody from church is around? The words in the Bible and the strong words of a person the Most High chose to deliver them to you are not there for righteousness. Is as a is a seven days week a thing? I'm sorry, you done with that? Yeah. Okay. Let's get Deuteronomy. <clears throat> um, the seventh chapter. You may wrap it up. Just have two scriptures I want to read. Read Deuteronomy seven and six. All 
on these pages, some new Bibles, these pages stick together. Okay, so Deuteronomy 7 and 6. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6. Mm -hmm. For thou art an holy people unto the Most High thy power. The Most High thy power had chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. Right, so we are holy people. We don't have to be written in something. Okay, destined for greatness, subject to sin. So we all have been destined for greatness. The Most High wanted something great for us. He wanted us to, uh, the Most High is, we're, we're, in the, uh, we're in the restoration process. This is the restoration process of his people. This is the, the restoration uh, process and the restoring of the earth. That's what's taking place. And a lot of us treat it like it's just something insignificant. Like we don't even know what's going on. That How could anything in this society be more important than what the Most High is doing right now? How can anything in this world be more important? When the power of all powers is getting ready to reinstitute righteousness in the earth again for everybody's benefit for everybody's benefit for our benefit the children of israel and also for the nations because look at the, the, the leaders of this world now look at what they've done to this society look at it look at all the disparity disparity the sorrow the suffering look at it the most high is going to change all these things you think everybody will be on board you would you, you would think everybody would be on board to set the record straight. Read. The Most High, thy power had chosen thee to be a special people mm -hmm. unto himself, mm -hmm. above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Mm -hmm. The Most High did not set his love upon you, nor chose you, because you were more in number than any people. Right, so it didn't have anything to do with numbers. That's why we can't get caught up in numbers. A lot of people get caught up in numbers. Okay, how many people in that church? Mm -hmm. well, we, we got, you know, we got almost 50,000 members in our church. People get caught up in that. Okay? But the most high, he, he, he's not even dealing with that. Okay? Doesn't matter how many people you are. It, it is to him. What matters to him is, you know, his righteousness. What are you bringing forth? Okay? Read. For well, you were the fewest of all people. Mm hmm but because the Most High loved you and because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers. Mm -hmm. To the Most High is a man of his word. Okay? He loved us and he wanted to keep an oath that he made to our forefathers. Okay? Me. Have the Most High brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of bondmen mm -hmm. from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Mm -hmm. Know therefore that the Most High thy power, he is the Most High, the faithful power, which keep it covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments. Right. So the most I want to keep this agreement, okay? But he's only going to keep the agreement with those that love him and keep his commandments. All right? Read. For a thousand generations. Mm -hmm. And repay them that hate him to their face to destroy them. He will not be slack to him that hated him. Right. And those who don't want to honor the covenant and honor the commitment, you want to, you want to deal with his wrath. Because we're going to be children of disobedience. Read. He will repay them, pay, repay him to his face. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt therefore keep the commandments and the statutes and the judgments which I command thee this day to do them. Wherefore it should come to pass. Let's, on Let's get right. Deuteronomy the fourth chapter, last scripture. <clears throat> Deuteronomy 4, and let's start from verse 1. Okay. End it. With the greatness, okay, that everyone should see in us, that the nations should see in us, that used to see, they used to see this in us, but they're going to see it again, even though they don't see it now, even though a lot of times we don't see it in ourselves, but it's going to come to, it's going to come to pass, all right. Deuteronomy four and let's start from verse five. Fourth chapter, let's start from verse one. Deuteronomy chapter four, verse one. Mm -hmm. Now therefore hearken, O Israel, unto the statutes and unto the judgments which I teach you, for to do them, that ye may live, and go in and possess the land which the most high power of your fathers giveth you. Ye shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall you diminish aught from it, right. that ye may keep the commandments of the most high your power, which I command you. Your eyes have seen what the most high did because of Belpeor. Mm -hmm. 
For all the men that followed Baal Peor, the Most High thy power had destroyed them from among you. But ye that did cleave unto the Most High your power are alive every one of you this day. Behold, I have taught you statues and judgments, even as the Most High my power commanded me, that you should do so in the land whither you go to possess it. Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations. That's how we become great again. That's how we get our greatness again, by keeping the Most High's laws, statutes, and commandments. This is what's going to allow us to get that respect again that we've been looking for. This is what's going to allow us to come out of the captivity and the conditions that we're in as a, as a people. This is the answer. The Bible is the answer. Us keeping the Most High's laws, statutes, and commandments, this is the answer to all humanity. This is the answer to the earth. If everybody would just embrace this, we can all work on stock. We can all work on the restoration process of, of putting things back in the proper order that it needs to be in. So this is the greatness. This is our destiny as a people, as a most high chosen people. And this is also the destiny of the nations also. That they adhere to the most high's laws, statutes and commandments so they can go forth and, 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 uh, and be reestablished in their specific societies and countries and govern it in righteousness according to the Most High Law. Okay, so this is the purpose. All right. So with that, uh, brothers and sisters, uh, that's going to be it uh, for today's uh, Sabbath class. Um, I, I, I apologize for for the um, for the technical difficulties that that we were having and the streaming, but uh, you know, there's there's bad weather here uh, where we're located at, and so that that could have uh, been affecting the uh, the um, the transmission. So we apologize for that. Um, I believe Elder Gabar is going to be coming on uh, later on this afternoon. Um, Elder uh, Recall possibly may may um, may do a cameo. You know, if, if him and Elder Lawyer have time, as I said before, they are preparing for the next session of the Hebrew Academy. Uh, which will uh, be December the 25th. So those of you who haven't had the opportunity to register, please do. Uh, also, I believe I mentioned earlier too that Elder Recall, um, Elder Lawyer possibly also may um, uh, be with them also in the UK, okay, celebrating the Feast of Purim. So those of you, uh, I guess he'll make the announcement. I'm not sure with, 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 with uh, what specific branch location he will be at there um but i um, i'm quite sure he'll make the announcement to let everyone know um and in the meantime you know you brothers and sisters just stay strong and continue to uh just continue to serve the most sign christ and, and you know work on your spirits and get yourselves together i hope that you were able to uh obtain something and get something from this lesson today once again i thank elder your rock he always put together uh um you know good lessons that really benefit the spirit of, of, of everyone you know, so I appreciate that. So um, I think that's going to be it. I don't think there's any other announcements we need to make. Is, is there? No. Okay. So um, Sabat Shalom. You want to say anything? Shalom, Dan. Okay. Stop, man. Right?